Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we are doing part six of our Cashmere Canton Moto Jacket So Long. As always, thank you to University of Sewing for this Bernina 770. This is my loaner machine that they have um, sponsored me with a loaner machine um, to use for the next year. I have really been enjoying sewing on this so far. This is my first project on the machine, loving it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna be finishing our jackets today, folks. You should have a shell of your jacket, whether view A or view B. I have, um, go ahead and, and press your hem up. Don't sew anything, but go ahead and press your hem up the one and a half inches. Um, it's just helpful once we've got the lining bag to have that memory crease. I've gone ahead and put binder clips on mine because I'm trying to press pleather and it doesn't want to be pressed. So I have put binder clips um, at all the major junctions here, all the seam allowances, just to keep that um, kind of set it a little bit. But we've got our shoulder pads in both sides. Our whole outer shell is all set and ready to go. And then you should have your lining, which is all also all set and ready to go. So let's get going with our, um, with bagging out the lining. Are we ready for this folks? <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring you to the sewing machine and show you what the first step is gonna be. Okay, we are going to start and we're gonna be bagging out our lining and we're gonna do this in a couple of different um, passes. So first off, we have our jacket front and I'm stretching this out. You wanna make sure that your zipper tape is coming back so it's wrong side up, so it's coming back into the body of the jacket. We've got our collar folding down, okay? And then um, there's nothing over here to worry about. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take right side, we're gonna do this collar first, and now we're taking the right side of our jacket and we're going to put those together. All right, so I'm actually gonna pin within the seam allowance on this one. Um, and I want, I think I want the jacket up, so I'm gonna flip this around. See, look at me thinking through things. All right, so we are gonna be sewing a line of stitching, matching our notches, that goes um, just across the back, the neckline, basically, of this jacket. We're gonna do the neckline, then we're gonna do the fronts, then we'll do the um, edge of the facing, and then we will do the hem, leaving a little bit um, of a hole there at the hem to turn the jacket out. A lot of times I leave a hole in the sleeve lining um, to turn the jacket out, but um, I mean, you can leave a hole anywhere. You can leave a hole in a side seam. You can leave a hole in a sleeve. You can leave a hole at the hem and then just hand sew that together. Just gonna follow along with the instructions though. Sometimes the bagging of the lining just needs maybe a little bit of extra hand holding. And we've got a lot of layers going on now. All right. So we've got it all pinned at our junctions. So I'm just going to start at one end, half of an inch, and sew all the way across this neckline to the other end. So let's go to the machine and do that. Okay, as we start sewing, again, I have the jacket up and the um, um, facing of the lining down. I'm just going to anchor a stitch here, but I have the zipper that's here. So we need to be, I can feel the very, oops, the very sitting pins flying, the top of the um, zipper pull right there. So I'm actually walking the handrail, uh, the hand wheel, the handrail, the hand wheel. That way, if I accidentally hit that metal stopper, 
like right there, I don't break a needle. Okay. And once we are past, there we go. Just be very careful. Now we shouldn't have an issue on the other side of the zipper because it's further down. It goes kind of into that shoulder line and it's further into the body of the jacket. Um, also, just go slow. You want as much of your project up on your table as possible. I realize that can be difficult sometimes. Sometimes we don't have very big sewing surfaces. Um, I also have binder clips attached to the hem of the jacket. I'm just sticking my hand kind of in between the lining and the body of the jacket, just making sure that the lining isn't getting caught up because it is, you know, that fabric is so light. I don't want to accidentally get um, anything caught up where it shouldn't be. There's nothing more annoying than having to go rip something out because you weren't careful. <laughs> Now remember, especially where we have a lot of these seams, we have a lot of, just pricked myself on the pen, a lot of layers going on here. So just go slow. I also have taken my stitch length back up to three millimeters. I had taken it down to um, 2.5 when I was sewing the lining. So again, my hand, um, I'm kind of going back and forth between being on top of the work and being in between the layers just to make sure that everything is easing in nicely. Alternatively, um, I mean, you could baste in, if you're worried about catching, you know, with all the layers, you could also baste I don't do a whole lot of basting. I guess I'm too impatient. <laughs> All right. All righty. All right. Now. Before we do anything, oh, see, that slipped, so I need to go back and fix that. Everything else looks great, though. Okay, so I just really need to quick unpick from here to here. It's good when this stuff happens, so you can see how to fix it if it happens to you. Just going to unpick a little section here. Luckily, because we're using a little bit larger stitch length, it makes pulling this out a little bit easier. Be careful and not to rip. Pleather is just a different beast. All right, so now I can scooch that up where it needs to be. I'm trying to just keep that within the seam allowance. And now we can come back and sew it in place. So I just overlap my stitching just a little bit. Sometimes when you're making sure you're not catching um, any pleats or anything, it can be very easy to accidentally, especially with curves, pull something down that you didn't mean to pull down, like I did there. All 
Alrighty. All right. So now we're all good to go. Got our stitching lines all matched up. Okay. Now, before we do anything else, this is the other seam that I really want to clip because um, it's going to want to lay, lay flat. Um, we also want to grade this seam, but let's do that first. Let's grade, and then, <laughs> and then we will um, clip into it. So I'm just going to grade. I'm going to um, cut the lining seam allowance to like half of its width with and I'm going from like the notch that's here on the front looks we don't I don't really need to grade all the way out um especially while we're still sewing so I'm just going to cut this seam allowance of the lining to half of its width stab myself with scissors because we do have a lot of layers in through here now this is not nearly as thick as my daughter's leather jacket was through this area, but still a lot of layers. You wanna be careful that you're not cutting something you don't mean to cut. To nothing. Okay. So now, I mean, we could trim the collar a little bit too, but I think we're probably okay. So now starting at this notch, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to clip into the seam allowance about every half of an inch so that when everything is turned out, this collar lies nice, the neckline lies nice. And once again, you just want to be careful that you're not cutting something you don't mean to cut. Alrighty. Okay. So I've clipped into that seam allowance all nice and neat. All right. You can peek if you want just to make sure you know, that you caught, sorry, let me hit the camera one more time, that you caught everything nicely. What did I get? Oh, got interfacing on my collar. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I'll clean that off later. Um, here's my little hang tag. I mean, this all looks great. Okay. I'm very happy with how that neckline is looking, so we're good there. All right. Back to inside out. All right, our next step is that we're going to do the sides. So let me reset up the camera here. Okay, our next step is going to be to sew down the fronts, the sides of our fronts. And those should equal one another. And I'm going to sew with, um, I'm just going to put a couple pins in here. But I'm going to sew with the interface side up because technically it's the most stable. Okay, so I will sew down this side and then I will sew down this side. Now, this side has the zipper. So what we're gonna have to do on this side is just like we've done with all of our other zippers. I'm gonna sew with the interface side up, but I'm gonna have to sew part of the way, backstitch, move my zipper, pull, and then sew the rest of the way. I'm just gonna sew. And I'm gonna sew right on that um, line that I've already stitched. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that real quick at the machine and then I'll be right back. All right, so I have sewn down, ooh, down the front from the top to the bottom on both sides. Now remember 
on the zipper side. Where is the zipper side? <laughs> on your zipper side. That's the same side I showed you. You um, want to make sure, there we go. No, nope. there we go. You wanna make sure that your needle is way over to the um, left, um, like when we sewed our zipper in, just to make sure you get things nice and close to that zipper. And be careful around those zipper stops down there, folks, because they will jump up and grab you. All right, so now that we have our fronts sewn, we can go ahead and carefully trim our corners. Now don't trim off any of your um, stitching there. You don't wanna cut off your back stitching. And just cut off these top corners. We'll do the bottom corners here in a bit. If you've crossed over a line, then you can cut it off. If you've sewn over an intersection, you just gotta make sure you've locked those stitches in. Although we will be top stitching, so that's gonna help things as well. Okay, so now we are going to unpin this because I've gotta unpin a few of this. So now we are going to sew here to the bottom. And we are going to sew from this end until we get to, um, and I'm gonna sew with the facing up because we wanna stop. We wanna stop a half of an inch away from the facing, um, about, you know, right there. So maybe put a pin right where you wanna stop sewing so that you don't flip this around a little, so that we don't get confused. But that shall lie nice and flat, and we're gonna stop at half of an inch. which is right about there on that side. And then on this other side, we've got our zipper stop over here. So we just gotta be careful. Take that off as well so we can get in here a little. We're gonna have to unpin this whole, or unclip this whole thing anyway. So then we're gonna sew the same thing and then we'll stop at a half of an inch. So you will overlap into this. On this other side with the zipper, you will overlap into this a little bit. So I'm gonna pin this right about, that's about, ow, not my finger, right about there. So I'm gonna sew from this side and stop here at this pin so that you've got this half an inch. Um, that really hurt this half of an inch done. So I'm really quickly gonna go and just sew right across the bottom, stopping a half of an inch before the end of this facing and also with the facing up so that I can see what I'm doing. I'll be right back. Okay, we're starting to get our bag a little bit um, more together. So now I've just sewn across here and left that half of an inch up. This is the non-zipper side because the zipper is actually uh, right there on that side. And then on the other side, I did put my needle in its leftmost position and I, you've got a stop that's right there. I hand cranked all the way this whole area just to make sure that my, I could get close to that without cutting, um, without hitting that zipper stop there. You can kind of see that. And again, I've stopped just short of there, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is trim this bottom corner Trim just a little bit extra out of there just because it's bulky. And then on this side where you've got the zipper over here, we actually need to trim diagonally up to that point in order for this next, well, in a couple of steps to work. Just on this side though. So I'm just gonna cut up two, but not through that stitching line. Right there, okay? We don't have we don't do that on the other side. This side is fine. All right, but we are gonna trim our corner. All right. So now 
we are going to complete our bag. <laughs> so if you've got your hem pinned up, now is the time to undo that. Hopefully that's given me a memory crease. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to stuff our sleeves up into this bag. <laughs> and technically your um, lining is shorter than your jacket, okay? So what we are gonna do now, and this is why we left this unsewn, and we will get to that here in just a minute. But what we are doing is unfolding that hem that we put in there, and we are bringing the lining all the way down, starting here, all the way down, and see, we're gonna have this. That's okay, don't worry about that. We're matching our raw edges of our hem with the raw edges of our jacket. And we are gonna pin across. I'm just going to pin my major intersections here but we're gonna leave a gap in the bottom here so that we can turn everything right side out. So with my daughters, I sewed up to where the dart was, which is, you see the dart right here. So I'm gonna stop sewing there Leave this all open and then pick back up at this other dart. I mean, you wanna make sure that your center still matches because that will need to match up eventually. And then any excess pieces, like your sleeves that just wanna be in your pockets, just kinda shove them on up. Actually, your pockets will be on the outside, Never mind but your sleeves, you just wanna shove those on up into the bag. This is why it's called bagging the lining. All right, so now I'm gonna stitch for at a half of an inch, cause we've got this little jog here, from here all the way to here, back stitch really well. Then I'll start back up here and stitch all the way to here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll meet you right back here. All right, so now we have our bottom sewn. So our lining sewn to our bottom, but we've left a nice big gap to get in there so that we can turn everything right side out. Okay, but we've got these, these areas that need on either side that need to be closed up. Okay. So I'm gonna show you, this can be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna try and go slow so that you can see exactly what we are doing, okay? Our goal is to make this a continuous seam with our hem kind of coming up. So it's a little bit, it's treated a little differently on each side. So this is the left side when worn, okay? This is the side that does not have the zipper in the front seam. The zipper's kind of over here to the side, but the zipper is not over here in this front seam. Left side when worn, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the front and the front facing, and we're going to spread them apart like this, okay? Now, we're gonna line up the lining with this um, facing piece, but we're, we've got a gap. So we're gonna pull these apart until that lies flat, okay? We want the seam allowance of everything to be going towards the lining and or the facing. Okay, and here is, so our zipper is in this seam right here. I can feel the end of the zipper that's right there. So we are gonna have to be very careful, um, but we'll, 
come to that here in just a second to, to stitch that. Um, but I've pulled this and I've just kind of folded a little bit of the excess lining into this seam and then laid this seam down. And then the seam of the facing here is all pushing towards the lining and or the facing. This can get kind of confusing. Cashmere also has a little tutorial. Um, if maybe that'll make better sense, but hopefully that makes sense. Facing, front, uh, this is basically piece uh, three. Both of these are piece three. <laughs> the interface piece three and interface piece three. And then we've got piece two, and I think this is piece 14, so the lining, okay? So now I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna start sewing where I stopped and sew all the way until I can basically meet up with the seam line here for this zipper. So I'm gonna stop right there where I've sewn, um, but right there before the zipper. So let's go over to the machine and we will do that real quick. All right, so I've got my facing up. Just gonna set my presser foot down and get it going here. Okay, so I have everything pinned in place. I want all of my seam allowances going towards my facing and or my lining. Kind of pull this around a little bit. If you need to stop and make sure that your presser foot is I don't want to get too close to that stop. Now I'm back up to that um, original. Oh my gosh, my foot has traveled away from me, folks. All right. So now we're just going to turn this corner right side out and make sure everything looks good. And it should... Okay, let me. So I'm just gonna go inside my hole here. And that should, I mean, my corners need to be popped out. But that should sit I mean, this looks awful right now, but that's okay. <laughs> that will sit beautifully. Well, it gets pulled under. Hold on, I'm having a hard time seeing where my crease was. There we go, where my crease was. All right, so that will sit um, really nice when all that's top stitched and when I get my you know corners all poked out. So feeling very good about that side. All right. Back, inside out. So let's now go to the other side of the jacket. So this is the side that does have the zipper in the, um, go back over here. We'll go back over here and I'll show you. All right, so now we are over here. Now the zipper is in, this is the right side when worn and the zipper is in the seam right here. So this is the one that we had to clip into right here, okay? So we're basically doing the same thing um, it just looks a little different because, you know, you had this facing piece that we had to cut into and all that. So again, I'm going to pull my facing and front piece apart because we want this to be one continuous line again. I'm going to turn this around just so a little easier to see. Okay, so again, pulling the coat away, the front away from the facing. Now, this, I can see my little crease that's in here from that I pressed in for my hem. I want to kind of fold that back on itself. And it should be right at that point that we cut. So again, 
This is the seam allowance of the um, facing here that we will cut, and we want that to, to dangle down there. We don't want to get any of that caught up in the body of the jacket. I'm just gonna pin that. Okay, so we've got this folded up on itself, this hem folded back on itself. And then the front lining is actually gonna get tucked into that, okay? I'm probably gonna have to move my pen for just a second. Again, this is pretty fiddly. But we just want that to be nice and flat. So now, and there's this little seam allowance that I clipped, I'm gonna sew from here all the way down to my little point right here, okay? So let's go over and do that. All right, so I've got my lining. I have, no. Just wanna make sure everything is nice and flat. And again, I do have lining folded up in here as well as this is the hem allowance. You can feel all sorts of stuff you know, fold it up back in this to the left of the presser foot, but that's okay. We're not concerned with that. So I'm just sewing at the half an inch seam allowance down to that point, and then we will backstitch. All right, like so. So now we're gonna check this side. Just to make sure we don't have any weird holes. Although I do find the other side to be a little harder to get correct, so I think we'll probably be good. So let's look and see what this looks like. Oh yeah, look how nice. So see that pleat that we folded in there? Um, is exactly what we want. And there we go. Isn't that magical? Please let me know if you have questions down below. Um, that can be, a, that's the, probably the trickiest part of this entire jacket. But don't let it, I mean, just keep practicing. Keep re-watching this over and over again. Don't let it uh, freak you out. All right, folks. It is time to turn whew, everything right side out and give it <laughs> there's this filming room um and give everything a really good press um so now i'm just gonna pull everything through right side together um and then when i go press i'm gonna work my corners out i like to use a um double pointed knitting needle for that but you can use whatever you want. There are point turners. So we're just gonna come here to the base of the jacket. Now our sleeves haven't been done yet, but that's okay, we'll get to those. That is next. So I'm just going to kind of get to all of my points that are here and kind of try and push those out with my finger. And when I say press with this pleather, it's, it's, it's not gonna press like super great, but... <laughs> Um, I will be top stitching everything, so that will help. So I'm just kind of pushing the four corners of my jacket as much as I can with my finger, which is preferable. The side with the zipper is easier because you can kind of grab that zipper and yank it. You can kind of pull that zipper through. Alrighty. 
And pull the rest of the jacket through the hole in the lining. Stand up so you can see a little better. Okay, folks, look at that. We have pulled our jacket and my hem is staying. That's exciting. <laughs> that's very exciting. And that's about as close as I could get to that point. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling really good about this, honestly. All right, so I'm just going to stuff my lining into its corresponding sleeve real quick. You know, like, like it would be if it were worn. Stick both of them through. Like so. Um, but I'm going to really quickly go and give everything just as good of a press as I can, um, just so it's ready for, um, oh, that's going to be tough to get that all press nice, <laughs> but just so that it's ready for top stitching when we are ready to get to that point. So I'm just going to go really quickly, give everything a really good press um, with a press cloth because this is pleather. And then when I come back, we're going to um, finish our sleeves. Okay, I have to admit, I have to say for being pleather, this does press pretty well. You know, I was able to get, it's much less poofy than it was, but we will top stitch it. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna do our sleeves now. I've finished one. I am gonna go ahead and top stitch from one edge all the way around to the other edge. I'm not gonna mess with the gusset. Obviously you've got a zipper in the way, but um, I, I do wanna top stitch mostly because I just want that, um, I want that, crease to stay <laughs> but we've got the sleeve all set and ready to go i've even put um tacked down my underarm seam allowances together so now we're going to do it on the other side i'm going to show you how to do that then once we have finished the sleeve we will top stitch around the jacket and then close up our lining down here and be finished oh no not yet we're going to put i'm going to i am going to go ahead and do the snaps um and I'll kind of talk you through that. Different snap sets are gonna look differently, but I will talk you through that. Okay, let's do with our sleeve. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and stick your arm through your sleeve with the um, lining, because we wanna make sure we're not getting anything twisted. So as you can see, there is the underarm seam that matches this underarm seam right here, okay? So I can pull my hand out. So what I find helps me the most is to fold this like it would be worn, okay? So basically, those would be right sides together in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> this is just for a reference point, though. It doesn't have to be pretty. Okay, so now I'm just going to Pin those together. I just don't want anything to get twisted when we're flipping things around. Okay, so now that I've got that pinned, I'm going to go in to the lining, and I'm going to go in between my sleeve lining and the actual sleeve, and I'm going to grab that little reference point there and grab onto it so I don't lose it, and then I'm going to pull everything out through here so you get this weird like infinity mobius i mean it gets like twisty and it's gonna look weird um but i'm gonna un pinch that real quick so now those we can kind of unfold those so those are going to go right sides together okay and I am going to pin just because we're getting to the end of this project. We're pinning. <laughs> and actually, yes, this way I want to pin with the, I want my lining to be down against the feet dogs. All right. 
So now we're basically, if we pull the sleeve out, we are basically pinning our sleeve right sides together inside this sleeve opening. And again, it looks weird. Your other sleeve seam is gonna match up with one of these um, gusset seams. Keep my pins on the same side. And I also wanna make sure that my gusset seams are lying flat. So I want those lying. I don't want this to accidentally get turned up or something. That will cause a bulge that will be very uncomfortable. Okay. So now that we have <laughs> this weird conglomeration here, I'm actually going to turn this kind of like I did with my when I was setting the sleeve in to where the lining kind of comes up over the edge of the jacket so that I can easily sew it like this all the way around. So let's go to the sewing machine and sew this closed. All right, so I've got everything under my presser foot. This is just kind of weird and you just kind of have to go with it. <laughs> So not really sure why this is sewing so slowly. So I'm just making sure that that gusset seam is all nice and flat. Oops, sorry. Once, my machine's acting very bizarre. <laughs> Once we have, it's gonna get taken on a life of its own here. Um, once we have that sewn all the way around, we can now pull our sleeve back out. We've got that crease that we quote unquote pressed in. And there we go. Our sleeve is all nice and done. So I am um, gonna turn my sleeve inside out and I'm just gonna top stitch from this area at a 3.5 inch or inch, 3.5 millimeter stitch from this side all the way around to this side. And then I'm gonna come back and um, show you how to make a chain loop for your underarm seam. All right, I'm going to show you how to do a thread chain in order to um, keep your, just to kind of keep your lining in place um, at the underarm. I've got, oops, sorry, <laughs> that all top stitch, so that's good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the jacket and we are wanting to sew the um, seam allowances of the underarm lining to the underarm of the jacket. So we're just, we've still got the jacket nice and open here for a little bit longer. And I've got a needle, can you see that? A needle thread, just to, you know, just uh, doubled over on itself. So I'm just gonna go into the jacket. And here is my underarm seam of my lining right here. And just within the seam allowance, I'm gonna do a thread chain. And this is how we do that. I'm gonna go into just the seam allowance. I've knotted off my thread. So I've gone through it once. I'm gonna go through again. So I'm making a loop like this. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And now I'm just with these two fingers gonna keep that loop open. I'm gonna grab this thread here. It's a crochet and then 
Secure that down. Grab it, secure. This is how you do a crocheted chain loop or a thread loop. Thread, loop, thread, um, hanger, thread. <laughs> what? I'm not sure what to call it. The name has just escaped my brain. She suggests, um, you could also use a piece of fabric. I just think this is easier. She suggests about two inches. So I'm just gonna keep on going. These do make up pretty quick. So this is just gonna keep the lining in place. Okay, I think I'm done. So I've got my um, loop open, but instead of just pulling this through, I'm just gonna put the whole needle through and tie it off. So now I can come to the underarm seam here that I trimmed and I can go through that seam allowance. back up and then tie her off and I'll show you what the finished looks like all right so I've got um, the chain loop I don't why do I keep calling it a chain loop that doesn't make sense the crocheted thread holder um, attached to the underarm seam of the lining and also to the jacket. So that's just gonna keep things from your sleeves like pulling out and pulling the sleeve in when you're taking the jacket on and off. So now we can put that back into place. Folks, it is time to top stitch around our jacket. And my sewing machine is being weird. I don't normally use a computer machine and it has developed a mind of its own. I have rethreaded, I have taken everything out to check and see. I don't know, it may just be tired of sewing pleather. I get it, I'm tired of sewing pleather too. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to do the entire perimeter of the jacket, starting and stopping here, because obviously I can't sew over this zipper. So I'm just gonna kind of, you know, start about here and then go all the way up around the jacket. I'm gonna do the whole neckline, come back down the front, down around the hem. She doesn't suggest doing the hem, but I'm gonna do the hem um, all the way around until I get right back to this spot here. Um, and then I will meet you back here and we are gonna hand sew the uh, lining closed. We're almost finished, folks. Okay, so I've got everything top stitched all the way around. It's feeling very fancy. Um, okay, the last thing before our snaps, which the snaps are optional, is that we need to close up this lining. So what we are going to do is, had a needle ready. We're going to take a needle. A hand sewing needle. And we are going to slip stitch this area closed. And then, folks, the only thing we have left to do is put the snaps on and then admire our work. <laughs> All right, I've done just a double thread. I like to have a tail at the end, um, I mean a knot at the end. Otherwise, I feel like um, it just pulls out real easy. Okay, I'm folding my um, allowance under like a half of an inch. And I'm actually gonna pin it just because I'm gonna try and just pin it through the hem and not all the way through. Um, just because that makes it easier to kind of keep a handle. I'll just put the one pin in there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is a little slip stitch. I'm just going to bury my knot kind of down here. 
I had to use a thimble when I did my daughter's um, leather jacket, but I think I'm gonna be okay not to have to do that here. So what I'm gonna do is I've buried my needle and I'm just going to catch a little bit of the fold and then catch a little bit of the hem. And this is a slip stitch. A little bit of the fold, a little bit of the hem. I'm not going all the way through the coat. I'm just going through that um, hem allowance. So I'm just gonna go and do this all along the hem of the coat. And then I will meet you right back here and we'll talk about snaps. Okay, the last thing we have to do is snaps. Now these are purely decorative. In fact, we don't even use the corresponding snap. Um, I'm not gonna actually hammer one on here because it's super loud, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. So basically when we're wearing the jacket, it, with a regular moto jacket, you would have had to button down your collar. You would have had you know, a, a stud here to snap it down, and then it would have been worn like so, and there would have been a snap. However, I'm never gonna wear my jacket zipped all the way up like that. And I like the look of this better than the look of this. So I've decided to put my snaps like this because I will have my um, jacket open like this most. But basically you're putting them in the corner here of your lapel and the corner of your collar. I've put three in already, and I'm just gonna show you how I do that. Now, if you buy the snap that comes with the tool, um, this is a little different than what I linked down below, but I like to use a, um, a leather punch, but you can use an awl or whatever um, to make your hole. It just makes it a little bit easier to get that piece in. But I'm just gonna come in here and you just like so. Now with my daughters, I put the, the it on this side so then you could see this piece when it was folded back. But she also has nickel, um, the nickel color. And I want mine to be as, I mean, antique brass is what I've got with my zipper and all that kind of stuff. So we're going this way. It was a design choice. Okay, once we have our um, cap in the hole, you get this little, usually like a little anvil of some sort. It goes down. You then flip this over, put this, um, the cap into, onto the anvil. Then you place the corresponding, this is the female part. And then you get this little tool that has like a little pointy thing in there that goes into that. And then you hammer it really hard right here on the top. And it, um, let me show you one. It, spreads open the inside there so then your snap stays together. So they're very easy to do. So that is how you put the snaps in. Guys, and that is the final step. We have sewn the Canton Moto jacket. I, As always, if you have any questions, please leave them down below and I will answer them as soon as possible. Let's have a look at our finished product. All right, everyone, we have finished our moto jacket. The Canton Cashmere Canton moto jacket is finished. We have sleeve gussets. We have our zippered pockets that are fully functioning. Ugh. And to the side, we have Beautiful um, lined body. I mean, this thing is, I mean, you were with me when we made it. <laughs> I tell you what, even though this gives me um, Michael Jackson vibes from back in the 80s a little bit, I'm in love with this. Red is one of my favorite colors to wear. This warm red is perfect on me. I cannot wait. This is gonna be just a fun pop of color to wear. And per usual, just the great cashmere um, drafting and instructions. So if you have yet to tackle 
something like a moto jacket. I highly recommend this pattern. It's just been a joy and I've made it twice now, back to back. So <laughs> highly recommend this one. All right guys, that's all I have for today. As always, please leave any questions you have down in the description box below. I'm happy to answer those. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this sew along and until the next one or until the next video, <laughs> I will see you then. Happy sewing. Bye.